Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Oh my gosh I forgot what I call my report Just kidding Welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 31st, 2018 Before I get into the uh, USGS report I just wanted to uh, say thank you for everybody in their comments on my last few videos dealing with the Hawaii County Civil Defense um, reports that I'm putting out those are mostly for the the local viewers uh, looking to get the general information on you know what's going on locally so to speak however I do invite uh, everyone else to of course watch them as well um, they're a little dry they're going to be pretty much the same thing over and over and over um, but that's just kind of what it is unless there's changes um, so I will still be doing the USGS report as well. Uh, it's just that the civil defense one is something that I can put together within, you know, anywhere between 30 minutes to 45 minutes and, and usually get it up in an hour. That's why I'm doing that. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. So anyways, let's, let's get on to the, the general report. The USGS reports for Tuesday, July 31st, 2018 at 1017 AM Hawaii Standard Time. Fissure 8 continues to erupt lava into the channel leading northeastward from the vent. No overflows were reported this morning and lava levels in the more distant portion of the channel system appear low. At the coast, the south edge of the lava flow has not advanced westward in the past day and remains less than 175 meters or 0.1 miles from Poiki boat ramp in Isaac Halle Park. Lava along the south edge of the flow was oozing more to the east, but there were a few ooze outs to the west that were distant from the coast and not directly threatening Pohoiki. Lava is actively entering the ocean along a broad 2 kilometer or 1.2 mile flow front centered near the former Ahalonui Beach Park with a more minor entry building a pointed delta near the south edge of the flow. As of this morning's observation, there were no other active fissures. Moving over to Highway 130, just south of Leilani Estates, the HVO fuel crews are still on site tracking activity as conditions allow them to do so. This information is being reported to the Hawaii County Civil Defense. Observations are also collected on a daily basis from the cracks in the area of Highway 130, and there has been no significant changes in temperature, crack width, or gas emissions for several days. Up on the Kilauea Volcano Summit, a magnitude 4.5 earthquake occurred beneath the South Caldera at 12.30 a.m. this morning. Seismicity at Kilauea's summit decreased after the collapse event at 7.59 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, July 31st, which was very similar to previous events. The inward slumping of the rim and walls of Halemaumau continues. And finally, the EPA air monitoring sensor reports. The question is, is the grid online tonight? Let's take a look. Look at that. Yes, it is. So let's get right to the report. The sensor located at the Pahoa Community Center read it on 7-31-2018 at 8-32 p.m. 0, 0.0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0, 0.0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. Over in Nanavali Estates, currently the sensor is offline, but the last reading for July 31st, 2018 was at 6.37 p.m. and it was reading 0.0, .0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0.0, .0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. Moving down to Leilani Estates, the sensor reading at 8.32 p.m. for sulfur dioxide was 0.0, .0 parts per million and for hydrogen sulfide it was also 0.0, .0 parts per million. And for the last sensor reading down at Kalapana Seaview Estates, at 8.32 p.m., it was reading 0, 0.0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0, 0.0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. And that'll do it for tonight's USGS report and update. Um, now let's, of course, move on to some of the, the, the fun stuff. Uh, of, it's our favorite little segment. Look at that there. The first photo we're going to take a look at is this one right here. Um, what I want you to take a look at that there is basically in the middle 
uh, towards the top of the screen that little like plume where the looks like the clouds are touching the ground right there on the horizon line uh, that of course is fissure 8 and a lot of the steam and uh, the plume from the fissure rising into the clouds creating this cloud plume uh, over us uh, it has actually been raining here uh, pretty hard and I do mean hard um, for uh, about two and a half days uh, this afternoon uh, around two o'clock uh, p.m. time the the clouds started finally moving uh, back towards the uh, uh, what would it be the south um, southeast southwest you know from my location and uh, finally got some sun uh, it was really amazing yesterday I, I watched about two inches of water sit on top of the the ground uh, for hours and even after the rain you know let up it, it still took a while it, it's pretty saturated out here and the last major thing I want to point out is if you look at that there that is Pohoiki Road heading up towards uh, which would be west towards Leilani Estates and ultimately connecting to 132 past Leilani Estates and of course this one is quite obvious what I want you to look at and, and no it's not the lava river it's the fire line uh, going uh, across the landscape right there um, that is a uh, brush fire that was uh, apparently touched off um, well excuse me I should say it's been reported as it's believed to have been uh, ignited by uh, a spillover or an overflow of the lava which is most likely what has happened and uh, I apologize I forgot to show and mention this uh, situation or the story in the uh, July 29th update uh, bulletin again my apologies so here it is now uh, it's old news you probably already know about it but uh, that's pretty much all there is to it okay now I want to show you something that I, I noticed uh, in today's uh, thermal imaging map uh, by the USGS so uh, this is sort of kind of a look at that there but it's also uh, something about the uh, dynamics of the channel as well so I'm going to zoom in on the area of the channel I want to show you and I want you to look at that there right there where the two lobes of the braid come together if you look there at the top in the kind of pooled area uh, two things about that one uh, you can tell that that lava is obviously significantly cooler than the to the uh, to the rest even what's flowing towards it and it's also right there at the opening area of the other braid that I was talking about the other day that had or excuse me the other lobe of that of the second braid that I was talking about the other day that had actually shut down and people say you know possibly blocked whatever I, I think what what happened to that channel is what we're about to see happen to this lobe on the first braid is that yeah it is kind of a blockage but it's a blockage because for whatever reason the the lava begins to cool there most likely because of the decrease in in flow or velocity or temperature you know whatever the factor is but whatever the factor is is there's a decrease that that's the only point I really want to make is whatever factor is changing it's because it's decreasing uh, versus how it's been increasing uh, up until recently so I suspect that this lobe uh, will shut down uh, just like the other one did um, how long it'll take I don't know uh, but then again if the volume goes back up then you know who knows what's gonna happen but I wanted to point that out all right now from this photo that uh, I found in a USGS uh, PDF publication uh, about the Kilauea eruption uh, dating from uh, May 5th to June 15th I was I think it was uh, or maybe the 20th but uh, this photo was taken the evening of June 20th 2018 by Klaus uh, Hadap I, I hope I pronounced that right uh, and it's been provided courtesy of the USGS um, basically what we're looking at here is a, a photo taken uh, above the ocean looking back 
towards uh, Kapoho and Leilani and Pohoiki areas. Uh, to the right, there in the center of the screen, the, the brightest uh, red, that's Fissure 8. And of course, the channel coming down all the way to Ahalo Nui, uh, where it's making the ocean entry. Uh, the lights to the right, of course, are um, from Pahoa. And uh, this is an amazing photo. Um, uh, I applaud the, the gentleman that, that took it. Uh, spectacular. And the last thing I want to take a look at that there at is this uh, lava shed map. You may have seen it uh, if you've seen any of the videos of the town hall meetings uh, that we have on Tuesdays in Pahoa. Uh, the USGS presented this in their presentation. Um, I found it in the same PDF publication that I found the previous picture in as well. So I thought I would uh, show it to you here um, and explain what we're looking at. Uh, of course, we see the A, B, and C. These are zones assigned to the fissure and the channel system, uh, kind of based on the topography of the you know dis lines of descent, uh, if, if I understand their positioning, and where USGS thinks that the, the system might be the weakest uh, and prone to breakouts and things of that nature. Okay, and the area is labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Uh, these are the color-coded with the, the corresponding colors as the, the, the flow area if there's a breakout near one of these zones. So, for example, if there is a, a big breakout in uh, zone A of the fissure, uh, then uh, flow zone 1, uh, which is the color there on Leilani Estates, would be where uh, the, the flow would most likely uh, move through um, but this is a little deceptive because if you move through the zone for Leilani zone 1 uh, to the left that's going up slope and if you see that little blue squiggly line running down kind of diagonally across it uh, that is the lines of descent and moving to the right which is the east uh, is going down slope so if anything broke out there it would most likely travel north along the existing edge of the, the existing flow because that's moving the down hill direction and it would move into um, uh, the zone B uh, of the channel system area and probably then go through zone 2 which is the blue uh, there on the side of Nanavali. And if that breakout was continued to flow all the way to the ocean it would then eventually continue moving north down slope uh, of that area through zone 3 to the ocean. Um, now, if it broke out in zone B of the channel, then uh, most likely it would flow into zone 2 and, and go down through 3 into the ocean if it continued to flow. And moving over to zone C, uh, if we see it break you know, out there, it's most likely going to go into uh, zone 6 or 7 or 8 area and flow that direction. Uh, if anything between B and C, there we see 5. If it broke out there, it would most likely move, go through there, and it could go anywhere between 5 and 6. Uh, I mean, don't know for sure, but uh, that's basically what this map is, is telling us, um, that uh, there is the possible directions. And it's actually a very good map. Uh, I really like this one uh, because this is what I've been trying to envision in my head using just the lines of descent. Uh, but they've kind of got it mapped out very well, so uh, I do applaud the USGS for this particular graphic. Okay, and that'll do it for tonight's update. Uh, remember to hit that subscribe button so you'll get and the bell icon so you'll get notifications uh, of my latest videos. Uh, don't forget to hit the, the thumbs up if you liked the video, because I really hope you did. Leave me a comment and and uh, don't forget to share it with all your, share this video on, on your Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. Um, links are in the description for some other cool stuff. Uh, thank you for listening. You have a great morning, afternoon, or evening. This has been the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 31st, 2018.